Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your host, Seiji Samurai here, and welcome to the channel. Today, I'm here to bring you guys in our part two, What If Deku Was Shisui's Reincarnation, part six, I believe. Thank you all so much for tuning into this What If. I don't really got much else to announce, except I apologize for not posting much sooner. I went on a little bit of a trip with my family, but luckily, I've now returned, and now here I am making the part to the video. So hopefully you guys do enjoy. I recommend that you guys get prepared. I also want to make a little bit of a disclaimer. You guys will hear some stuttering or some background noises. If you guys could do me a favor and please ignore it. Trust me, that'll make the videos multiple times better. I would really appreciate it. So thank you all. Thank you all once again. And also, I recommend you guys get comfortable. You know, get some snacks, get some blankets, and overall, just make sure that you guys are feeling 100% a okay. If you guys understand that, thank you so much. And either way, guys, I recommend we begin this video. So with that being said, let's get started. You're never gonna make it. You're not good enough. There's a million other people with the same stuff. You really think you're different, and you must be kidding. Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it. It's impossible. It's not probable. You're responsible. Too many obstacles. You gotta stop it, though. You gotta take it slow. You can't be a pro. Don't waste your time no more. Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? Alright, guys. Let's begin this part of the what if. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy. And either way, let's begin. So guys, we now kick off part six to this what if with the force training arc, the beginning. At this, we will currently turn our attention to class 1A as everyone would, would be excited as they were here to be invited to a training camp and they were really excited for it. They were thinking that they were going to go out, have fun, you know, thinking of it as just nothing more but just camping in general. But Deku was not as foolish as them. He already had prepared just in case. After all, you can never be too careful. And after all the following events that has been happening, Deku has been on guard for a large amount of his time. So as the class 1A eventually ends up arriving at their location, this is when the truck would then suddenly stop. Or should I say the bus? Yeah, the bus suddenly stops. Now at this point, Aizawa would then exit out with the rest of the students being confused. Mineta would run out first as he had to use the bathroom with the rest of the class following him. This is where we end up meeting the Kitty Forest. I'm sorry, I don't really know their name, so I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna continue on. Are you, I'm sorry, I just don't know their names. So both of them would introduce themselves as we begin to explain that they're here to actually take them to the training camp, which makes them all excited, with Mineta asking where the bathroom is. However, right before they can get anything further, this is when Deku would then send something. Instantly, he jumps up into the air as the rest of the class when they wonder what exactly he was doing. This is when the ground itself begins to crumble as they would then be flipped over and thrown into the forest, with Deku landing gracefully while the rest of class when they are just thrown about. Now at this point, everyone would be there in the panic as this is when multiple creatures from the woods would then have sprout out, this being controlled by the one with blonde hair of the kitty force, like I said, I don't know their names, and I thought would be there watching everything. Jeez, don't you think you're being a little bit too harsh? I, I thought you were going to at least show some empathy for your students, one of them would say, but I thought would then shake his head. What empathy do I need? Those kids are monsters in their own rights. He would say with a proud smile, actually surprising them, as Aizawa has been showing more emotion lately. Not only that, but Aizawa has also been on guard. After finding about Kodagiri, the man has been training extremely hard, and due to this, his senses are all dialed up to the highest it could be, as he is no longer taking any chances. So with that, he'll be there watching everything, as this is when the students begin to combat against the creatures made by the Kitty Force. Deku would be the first one to step up, as he ends up actually rushing towards the creature, and as he does, he ends up pulling out a Swiss Army knife. At this, Deku would then begin to heat up the knife with some flame release, and as he does, the knife would be pretty much like able to melt through the beast in an instant, as Deku would speed blitz it and cut it in half. And at that point, the rest of the students begin to follow in his example as they begin to take down the beast one by one, with the rest of them just watching in shock. Wow, your students, you were right, Aizawa, your students are monsters. I'm getting excited, one of them would say, as she would watch everything with Jenny Norma's smile while the other one just shakes her head at her friend's attitude as this is where we can now move forward to the end of it. So after fighting off all the creatures there and also overcoming all the trials that had accompanied them through the forest, the rest of the class 1A were luckily able to arrive. As they eventually arrived, this is when they end up seeing the camp itself, as this is when the kitty force begins to apologize, but, but tell them that their actions are going to be rewarded as they can now relax and enjoy the camp. Now this will cause the rest of class 1A to get excited, so they begin to rush forward, but as they do, Deku would then encounter Kota, Kota will be there as he begins to just casually walk around with an angry expression. Now Deku understands this, but decides to introduce himself as he walks over to the kids and reaches out to shake his hand. Hello, my name is Azuku Midoriya, and your name? Deku would ask Kota his name, however, instead of answering Deku's question, Kota just tries to attack Deku in the balls. 
Now, of course, Deku, having been trained, has easily was easily able to catch this kid's punch as he begins to shake his head while wagging his finger. Now, I don't think that's a very appropriate response. Hoda gets pissed off as he begins trying to kick Deku, but Deku just gets up and just casually dodges out of the way, causing Koda to actually, like, you know, nearly fall over until Deku catches him. Ah, <sighs> great. Listen, kid, I know you don't like me, but violence isn't the answer, all right? Hopefully you'll learn that. At this, Koda will be angry at Deku as he tries to shake off Deku's hand, but Deku just casually just puts him down and walks off, not even looking back, with Koda glaring angrily at him. So with this, Class 1A eventually ends up, you know, enjoying their time as a few shenanigans begin to go down as they begin to relax and enjoy the camp, at least for one day. But that was only for one day. It was now time for the worst of it, as we now move forward. So we now move forward to the next following days, as during these next following days, this thing truly turned into a training camp. And it was really hellish training, as everyone in Class 1A was put through the ringer. And not even Class 1A. Class 1B had also arrived onto the scene, as they were there to participate. However, unfortunately, their training was not even a little bit easier, as they were all suffering. The training that the KD Force had put them through was to push their quirks and their abilities to their limits. Now, Deku in this one, he honestly wasn't really trying this hard, however, he was technically trying out a different technique. This is something I was debating on for a while now, which I finally decided on if I'm going to do it or not, and I decided that I am going to do it. If you guys seen the last part, you guys would know, but I'm just going to say it right now either way. Deku would currently be in the midst of training with the eight inner gates. And I know some people will definitely start commenting about how the power scaling will be very unfair, Deku will be very too OP, he's gonna start one-shotting everyone, which, I mean, he's, well, he's not doing it most of the time, but he's still beating his opponents nonetheless. Now, I'm just letting you know, Deku's only learning this eight inner gates, but he's not gonna master it, all right? He's not gonna be a master of it like my guy, or Rock Lee, I guess, although we haven't seen much of him since, well, Boruto, but still, he's not gonna be a master of them, okay? Now, Deku is only learning this because of a precaution, because of the fact that if he's in a situation where, let's say, I don't know, Genjutsu and Ninjutsu aren't exactly at his disposal, he would be forced to switch to Taijutsu. And although Deku would admit that his physical strength was well, Deku needed to have just a, just a small little precaution, you know? He needed a, you know, a backup plan for his backup plan, all right? And that's what exactly he's trying to learn the eight inner gates for. They gave him a temporary boost of speed and strength, and not only that, but it just overall is like just it's just an overall an amazing boost, okay? So, it's, yeah, it's just gonna be something he's gonna have in the back burner just in case for situations. So, if you guys understand that, now what we can now move forward as this is where we continue. So, the past following days, Deku would be training in the eight inner gates, and so far, he's he's currently like managing his body, all right? He's trying to get it into shape for this. Now, Deku, he was, like I said, physically stronger than almost everyone in his entire class. However, when it comes down to it, though, and there was actually one big problem, it was the fact that even though Deku's body was physically in shape, does not mean that he's going to be able to handle the brink of the eight inner gates. After all, you saw the training that Guy and Lee had to put through just to even use these gates. So what do you think Deku's going to do? So yeah, he's going to definitely go through some hellish training, but still, it's end up getting his body in shape and it's making his taijutsu way better. So that's a plus. As we can now move forward once again, as after all this training, the rest of Class 1A will be trying to rest their AK muscles after the ghoulish training. However, as they were resting, Deku would actually instead be walking around as he was honestly kind of thirsty. And as he does, this is when he actually ends up running into one of the kitty forces, who she right now was taking care of Koto, who currently right now was resting. Now, this is when both of them would then make eye contact as Deku and the Kitty Forces girl would then begin to talk, as this is when she actually begins to reveal Koto's backstory, his origins. She begins to explain about Koto's parents being killed by an unknown villain, and due to this, this kind of traumatized Koto, making him have some, some type of resentment towards heroes, and also villains, of course. Now, Deku, after hearing this, now actually understands Koda a little bit more, well, no, a lot more now, as he had seen his fair share of things like this in his old life. So, moving past this, for the next following days, Deku would be there, and whenever he was not training or studying or doing anything, he would be spending his time with Koda, just talking to him and everything, with Koda trying to be harsh to Deku, be mean to him, hit him, but overall, Deku was not leaving and pretty much just pissing off Koda a lot. Although Koda wouldn't admit it though, he was actually enjoying Deku's company, however he just really really did not want to admit it. 
as this is where we can now do a time skip. So after all these events have been passing by, the rest of Class 1A and Class B are now enjoying their time as they can finally start relaxing. The training camp had been hellish and gruesome, but they have all grown stronger and were now enjoying themselves for the next following days. However, unaware to any of them was the fact that someone was now making their move. At this point, we will now see, high up on a hill, we will see a portal then open up as a swarm of villains would then enter in, and the one leading them would be Shigaraki. Shigaraki will be looking down at the training camp as this was the precise location that All for One had instructed them to be at. At this, their objective was pretty simple, to capture Katsuki Bakugo, and also capture Tokoyami. Those two were the objective. The main one would be Bakugo in this scenario, but if they're able to get their hands on Tokoyami, that's an also another plus, as their quirks were very unique, so of course All for One would actually want to go after them. As we now move forward again, we will see Shigaraki as he would be watching everything, as this is when Dabi wouldn't step up. It's finally time for us to make our move, he would say as he looks down at everything that was happening. Now as he does, this is when Shigaraki then tells them to wait, as he says that they need to wait for the right time to initiate this. There can't be any failure this time. There can't. So as they begin to prepare for the events that are about to transpire, this is when Shigaraki will then give them a final warning. To beware of a certain Izuku Midoriya. Shigaraki was not going to be arrogant like last time. He knew exactly what this kid was capable of. Last time he had to make, he underestimated him and he paid the price. He had to sit there in anguish and anger at the fact that he was captured by some kid, not even the number one hero. And not only that, but he was treated as a joke practically, or at least in his eyes he was. So with this, he was making sure that the same mistake doesn't happen again. But if by some possibility of they're able to actually capture Deku, well, he wanted to give them one final order. And that was the fact that if they capture Izuku Midoriya, then pretty simple. Bring him to him. So that way, he's able to finally land the killing blow. As Shigaraki would say these final orders, as well as release the generous amount of killing intent, as everyone's able to tell that Shigaraki was dead serious. And even though Deku may not know it, one way or another, Shigaraki is going to be hunting him down and doing everything in his power to make sure that kid pay for what he did. As this is when Nightfall would then suddenly arrive. So at this point, all the classes have now enjoyed themselves, have eaten a hefty meal, or now are currently ready for the next part of their training camp, this being the test of courage. Both classes will be participating in this one, as Class 1A will be teamed up with certain members, except a few of their classmates would actually not participate, as they have bombed their exams, and due to this, they had to sit there for remedial lessons. So with that being said, as Class 1A starts getting paired up with others, this is when Deck would actually be paired up with no one. He'll be by himself. Now, of course, the rest of the class, well, except for a few, would actually worry about him, but Deku would just shake his head, saying that he was all fine. So with this, each one of them would begin to, begin to tell them that they should go to separate routes and tell them the whole point of this exam, as eventually, after giving them all the final warning, as well as explaining everything, they will then finally give them the green light to now enter through the test of courage and to give it their best, as we can now finally turn our attention to Deku's POV. So Deku was currently now walking through the forest as he was just humming a gentle tune while looking up at the night sky. He would be surrounded by the stars as well as the trees as he was enjoying his walk through nature. It was very relaxing. While doing so, Deku would also be practicing his breathing as he would be sucking up all the air, enjoying the sensation as this man was honestly feeling at peace. He honestly wished moments like these could last forever. As he would be enjoying himself though, this is when... He would then suddenly end up feeling a presence behind him. Deku would turn around and as he does, he would then see the scarred face of Dabi as his arms had been ignited with a blue flame. Gotcha! He would shout as Deku's eyes would go wide as a blue eruption would then shoot out to the forest. And this was not the only thing that happened. In a different location, a similar event would also occur as Aizawa, who had been honestly feeling some type of bad omen fall upon him, would instantly end up walking out of the remedial class leaving it to another teacher. As he begins to walk outside, wondering where exactly this bad sensation was coming from, this is when he would then suddenly be attacked out of the blue by Dabi. Or what I would say would be Dabi, instead it was actually a, a clone made by Twice. As both of these clones were aimed at both Waizawa well, and Deku. And just as the blue flames would then erupt, 
in different areas, this is when a purplish smoke begins to arise, as this will be poison. As many students begin to fall unconscious, would the rest of class be actually trying to help each other from passing out? At this point, it was now official. They were officially under attack. Now, at this very moment, we'll see in a different location that, well, Koda, who currently right now is by himself, which I never understood that. Who let a child by himself in this forest? I, I don't understand that. <sighs> you know what? Moving on. But either way, he was there by himself just to mood and brute. However, as he was, he would then actually see the smoke and the flames that were erupting, causing him to gasp and stand up. However, just as he does, this is when he hears a crack as he turns around to see this ginormous, muscular, <laughs> get it? <laughs> oh, I'm not funny, I'm sorry. But anyway, he'll see this ginormous, muscular man would then appear out of the corner as he'll be currently wearing a mask. Are you kidding me? I found a brat? Dang, I was hoping to find that one kid that he warned us about. Or heck, maybe one of the pro heroes. Oh well, you get what you get and you don't get upset. I'm going to enjoy beating the crap out of you. At this point, Koda would be terrified as this is when the large and muscular man would then rush towards him as this is when he would then try to punch Koda and actually attack him. However, right before Koda can get injured though, this is when suddenly he would then feel himself not get hit at all as he would feel no pain whatsoever. <sighs> I swear. Maybe learn a lesson from this. Don't wander off by yourself. In a forest. Alone. At this, Koda would then open his eyes as he would be in shock to see that Deku was right in front of him. And at this point, Deku would be there staring down at Muscular, as Muscular would be surprised that his target was no longer in front of him. Well, 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 if it isn't the brat himself. You know, I'm honestly excited that I ran into you. He gave us a pretty big warning, but honestly, you don't look like much, Muscular would say, as this is when he would then actually reveal his appearance. Deku would be there watching the man as he scoffs at the man's hideous display, and as he does, he puts Koda down. Don't worry, I'll finish this up soon. But in the meantime, learn a lesson from this, alright? Don't wander off by yourself. At this, Koda says nothing more, as this is where we now get a flashback. During a time where Dobby had attacked Deku, and that split instant, Deku had instantly, thanks to his, well, enhanced reflexes, was able to dodge out of the way of Dobby's attack. Now, as the clone of Dobby was excited at the fact that he thought he actually, you know, killed the guy, this is when suddenly Deku would appear right behind him, and with a simple flaming blade, he's able to cut up the clone in half. Now, the clone, instead of actually, you know, panicking or screaming, it just smiles at Deku's face, telling Deku that this night has just begun before falling down and just turning into a pile of mush. As this is where we now turn back to the present. So after that event, Deku had actually instantly went to look out for Koda, mostly due to the fact that he understood now that villains were here. And if they were here, that meant that everyone was in danger. But right now he had to make sure the kid was safe. After all, the kid was the most vulnerable in the situation since he had no way of fighting back. And lo and behold, he was in danger. Luckily he came. As he now turned back, Deku would be there facing off against Muscular, as the man would then begin to activate his quirk. He would gain to, I don't really know how to describe his quirk without it sounding weird, but let's just say he gains a generous amount of muscle as he looks down at Deku preparing for combat, telling Deku to give him all he got. Now as he does, Deku would then suddenly end up creating these two flaming swords, as he ends up rushing towards Muscular immediately. Muscular will be watching this with a smile on his face as he rushes at Deku as well. But Deku would dodge out of the way, and as he does, he ends up cutting Muscular with the flaming swords, a double cross on his chest. However, unfortunately, Muscular doesn't stay down at all, as he does feel pain from this, and he actually says that it stings, but he doesn't turn away and run as he instantly tries throwing another hit at Deku. Now, this will cause Deku to flip over, as thanks to the fact that he's quite flexible, he's able to dodge the way out of the attack, and as he does, he elbows Muscular in the face, or at least he was supposed to. Instead, muscles begin to build up on Muscular's face, preventing the blow from actually landing, or at least softening the blow to an extent, surprising Deku. And to make it even worse, now that Muscular had him, this is when suddenly he tries actually crushing Deku with both of his hands, as he tries to slam them both together, with Deku in the middle of them. However, once again, thanks to Deku's, well, body flicker, he's able to dodge out of the way, and once again avoids the attack for a split instance. So at this point, Muscular would actually begin to laugh as he actually compliments Deku for his speed and skills, but this is when he tells Deku that he's at a very real disadvantage. Deku's physical attacks were not enough, and that's the straight up point. He tells Deku that he won't be able to beat him, 
by using these petty little flames of his and the fact that this was over. The simple fact that Deku can't really land any lasting blows on Muscular, or at least that's what he thinks. So as Muscular mocks Deku one last time, he would then try to attack him as his back was turned. However, Deku would be able to dodge out of the way, and as he does, he lands a vital blow in Muscular's stomach. Now, Muscular scoffs at the blow, laughing at Deku's face. However, due when to his surprise, as he actually gets to land a hit on Deku, Deku would actually explode. He would just poof into smoke. This would surprise both Koda and Muscular as he couldn't believe what was happening, but the next shocking thing could never be explained. As this is when not one, not two, heck not even three, but a total of ten Dekus would then appear in front of Muscular. The man's eye would be in shock as each one of them will be dual wielding two flaming katanas. And the most shocking one, the most shocking thing was it was not even the regular orange and red flames, no. It was blue flames. As Muscular will see all this, he'll be so confused. How? I don't get it. You were right in front of me. How, how could you do this? What is this trickery? At this, he would try to come up with a logical explanation, but unfortunately, it was too late for him. With Deku's eyes revealing the Monkey Kill Sharingan, he would rush at Muscular at full speed. And before Muscular can do anything, it was too late. He would be barraged by all sides, getting slashed apart by these flaming swords, getting multiple burn marks, as even though he was quite durable, he was not durable enough. As this is when Deku, the real one, would actually appear right in front of him, as he would be landing a very powerful slash across his stomach. And with the flaming swords, this time the damage did last. As Muscular can't do anything more but cough up a little bit of blood, he would then be sent flying and crashing into the wall, with him finally being knocked unconscious and Deku being the victor. At this point, Deku would look at Muscular as the clones would then begin to disperse one by one before leaving one left. Deku had to admit, Muscular's quirk was interesting, also kind of gross, but at the end of the day, he did put up a worthy opponent. Not anything Deku could test out his full capabilities on, but he proved good enough. So at this point, Deku would then walk over to Koda, who the boy was right now watching Deku in admiration. And as Deku was about to, like, you know, sue the boy and actually ask him if he was okay, Koda would begin to cry and actually, like, apologize to him about how he was treating him. After all, he knew that he was being a douchebag. But Deku just shakes his head, telling him that now is not the time, as he orders the clone to take Koda away and get him to safety. Now, this would, of course, confuse Koda. However, seeing that Deku trusts this other Deku, he decides to go along with it. As Deku would send Koda one last smile, as the clone would then suddenly body flicker away, Deku would then look at the rest of the destruction that was happening as well as the poisoned air that was soon to be fading out. Good, it looks like the guy who was causing that poison fog was taken care of. Now I gotta help out the rest. Now as soon as saying this, Deku's eyes would then flash red. However, right before he could head off though, this is when Muscular would then cough up. <laughs> wow, I admit you have quite a lot of power in you, kid. You're strong, I give you that much. Now this will cause Deku to stop as he turns to Muscular as he prepares one last attack thinking that that last attack did not finish him off, which actually surprised him as he, he thought for sure that attack would finish off Muscular but it didn't. As he prepares for combat though, Muscular was already too tired to move. His body was injured and right now he didn't even have the urge to move at all. He was losing consciousness and fast. <laughs> oh don't let me hold you up kid. You can go on ahead but I'm just going to give you this one final warning. If you think that after all this, you can finally go back to how things were, live your peaceful little school life, you're dead wrong. By now, multiple people have their eyes on you, and your peaceful little life is now over. I recommend you start watching your back, kid, because trust me, all this is only the beginning for what's in store for you. As Muscular would say this, letting out one pitiful laugh, he would fall unconscious now, as he fully had succumbed to his injuries. Now Deku would look at Muscular's body as he was unconscious, and as he does, he would then turn back to everything as he then jumps away. And all the while while he was doing this, he would have this he would have the same words repeating in his head, before finally answering to Muscular's well warning, saying that he already knew. And that he would be prepared when they arrive. As his eyes would flash red in the night, he would then begin to feel a stinging pain in his eyes, way more intense than it usually is. At this, he would hold his eyes a little bit as he tries to like get the pain to subside, but it wasn't. It was hurting a lot, but he needed to fight through the pain. His eyes felt like they were on fire, but he kept moving as he rushes to his classmates as well as the teachers. In a different location, the teachers were currently fighting against the villains, and just like in canon, they were beating them down, however, the villains just continued getting back up and fighting. Now, after a while of just like fighting and just hitting each other, though, this is when Deku would then arrive at the scene. 
At this, the teachers will be there watching Deku while the villains will actually look at him in surprise, as he had fit the initial description that Shigaraki had offered them. Now, as they look at Deku, Deku will be looking at everything assessing the situation, and even, th and even though his eyes were in pain, he would act like a genjutsu, putting the villains instantly into unconsciousness, surprising the Kitty Force as they didn't even get to do anything. So at this point, as Deku activated the Genjutsu, his eyes began to burn even more. It was beginning to get bothersome for him. And Deku has a high pain tolerance, but this was just getting a little bit too much. But he shakes it off as best as he could, even deactivating the Sharingan for a little bit, although the pain was not leaving. As he then turns to the Kitty Force, telling them that now is not the time, as they were trying to ask Deku questions about what just happened. So realizing that Deku was right, they instantly capture the villains, and as they do, the one with telepathy would then actually begin to read their minds, and as she does, she actually ends up realizing their motive. She would actually tell this to everyone else, saying that they're after someone known as, well, Bakugo, and the other person was Tokoyami. Instantly getting this information, Deku would then rush off, while Bakugo, <laughs> this man, this man, he was having a field day as he was fighting this weird tooth villain who created ginormous razor sharp blades from his teeth and tries to attack Bakugo but he just beats him down. So with the information now being out there that Bakugo and Tokoyami were the prime well targets, Deku instantly dashes off to their location trying to get to them as quickly as possible. And as he does, this is when Deku actually ends up encountering Todoroki, however the boy himself seems to be looking around in confusion. T wait, what's, what's going on? Where's Bakugo? I thought he was with you. At this, Todoroki would be looking at Deku in surprise as he didn't get to sense the guy as he was approaching, but he shakes his head as he tells him that Baku was right next to him for a few seconds after they just beaten up a villain and now he was gone. At this point, Deku was so confused, but this one suddenly running through the forest, they didn't encounter, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Mezzo? Mezzo, I believe? I'm sorry if I do not say these characters' names, but pretty much is the guy who, create, who can create multiple limbs, okay? As he would appear, Deku would actually ask him a question like what was going on here, to which he pretty much begins to explain that he was teaming up with Tokoyami before he lost control. However, right before he could actually do anything or try to stop him, he suddenly just disappeared. There was nothing left of him. Now this really confused Deku right now. As he begins to wonder exactly what was happening, this is when suddenly a man begins to speak up. Now this will be Mr. Compress, who currently right now was holding both Bakugo and Tokoyami captive, as he revealed that he pretty much trapped them in a marble. Now, as he begins to explain to them that this was all fun and everything and that they now had completed their objective, it was finally time for them to make their getaway. As he begins to jump up into the air to escape power, Deku was not just gonna let that happen. No. So with that, Deku ends up actually appearing in front of the guy, surprising him, as Deku would then suddenly elbow him in the neck. This will cause his body to legit like freeze up a little bit as he loses feeling in it, and this causes him to release the grip on Bakugo and Tokoyami. However, as he tries to actually catch them again though, Deku was not done as he suddenly ends up grabbing the man by the neck and making him, forcing him to stare into his eyes. Now fighting through the pain, which was now growing so intense to the point it was becoming unbearable, Deku forced the man into a Genjutsu. And although yes, it hurt him quite a little bit, he had forced himself to continue on. So now that he had fallen victim to the Genjutsu, Mr. Compress would then fall limp into the ground as Bakugo and Tokoyami would then suddenly be released from the marbles, although they're unconscious. Now instantly, Tokoyami and Mizo would then rush over to them, checking on them to make sure that they were alright. Luckily, they were fine, no lasting injuries or really any injuries at all. In fact, they seemed to be just asleep. Now at this point, Deku was feeling tired of this as this is when he decided that enough was enough. This entire night has gone on long enough. So with this, using everything, Deku ends up trying to sense out the rest of the villains. The first he ends up sensing would be Toga, who currently right now is battling against Uraraka. Now Deku ends up rushing over there as quickly as possible, and as he does, he sees that Uraraka had pretty much pinned down Toga, except for the fact that right now she was currently using her device to suck out the blood out of her. Yeah, weird. Moving on. Now Deku seeing this, he is not here to play right now, as right now the most important thing was to keep the students safe. So with this, as Togo would look at Deku, Deku would simply flash the Mangi Kill Sharingan, even though it was hurting him at this point. Like, like this point, he legit doesn't even want to activate anymore, it's just like really hurting. But he forced her to pain and activated instantly, so that way she can fall unconscious. And at this point, Deku is now beginning to feel tiredness, as with the continuous pain, all the fighting and running that he has to do, it was getting tiresome. As this when as Uraraka would then rush over to him to make sure that he was fine, Deku would then shake his head, telling him that there was still more to do, as he begins to sense out the last few villains, this being Twice and Dabi. 
Now at this point, Deku ends up rushing towards them as quickly as possible, as they were the only ones left. There were no others after this. So as Dabi and Twice will be there, as we begin to think that the plan was now going smoothly, this is when they then sense the presence. At this arriving in a split instant, Deku would be there in front of Dabi and Twice, as he would be casually on top of a tree staring down at them. At this, his eyes would be flashing red thanks to the Sharingan, as he could no longer, it seems as if it was like they were out of control or something. He can't just forcibly disactivate it for some reason. As he tries to wonder exactly what was going on, now is not the time as he tells them that this was the end and that they were going to pay for what they were planning to do this night. Now Dabi and Twice would actually be surprised that Deku found them, but Dabi would just smile as he tells them that Shigaraki was right about him. Now as Deku wonders what that means, this is when suddenly multiple forms of Twice begin to emerge as they begin to attack Deku simultaneously. Now Deku seeing this would instantly begin to take them down as he would then actually use his own Shadow Clone to face off against Twice's. Now this would actually surprise them even further as they did not know about his abilities or skill set, all that they need to be aware of him. Dang bastard, you should have told us more about this kid. I knew his abilities were clones and I would have actually prepared for this. As he looks like the, all the clones are fighting, he would then begin to activate cremation, which is his quirk, as Dabi would then begin to melt or just disintegrate all the clones that were there, including Deku, or at least that's what he thought. However, unfortunately for Dabi, it would be a swing and a miss as Deku would then appear right behind him instead. As Twice would actually begin to point out Deku being behind him, Dabi would then turn around, releasing ginormous flames as he tries to swap blows with Deku, or at least aim for the face. Haradeku would then suddenly create a flaming katana, which is made of blue flames, as he counters Dabi flames with his own. Now this would surprise Dabi to the point where he's legit looking at him in shock right now, as he wonders who exactly this guy was. He, he couldn't possibly, is he a son of that man? At this, just the thought of Deku being the son of that man would actually infuriate Dabi even further, as he pushes the flames to actually begin to legit overpower Deku's flames. Now, Deku would wonder what exactly was giving Dabi this power boost as the man would begin to push the flames even further and actually injuring himself slightly. You're hurting yourself, you know that, right, you idiot? Deku would say as he actually now has no choice but to back away from the clash, but Dabi wasn't stopping as he released this ginormous amount of flames all around. It got so bad to the point where Twice had to actually run away. However, luckily he didn't run away far as Deku had already planned for this and created a clone, to which Twice, before he even knew it, would be knocked down in an instant, not by Genjutsu, but just by a simple neck chop. So at this point, Deku was now having to dodge a generous throttle of flames that were coming out of Dabi's hands, as the man was just attacking him relentlessly. Now, luckily, Deku was able to dodge out of the way, as Dabi would be cursing out at Deku, asking him who exactly he was. Now, Deku at this point was not going to answer his question, as he continues trying to dodge the attacks that Dabi was sending out, and finally having enough of it, Deku would instantly charge at Dabi at full speed, running straight towards him. Now Dabi seeing this would then shoot out the ginormous flames and as soon as they would actually hit Deku, Deku would actually just sub substitute himself with a log. Now of course Dabi doesn't notice as he actually smiles seeing that Deku actually got hit by the attack. However, this is when suddenly he would then feel himself, he will feel presence behind him and just as he turned around, Deku will once again behind them. Is that the only thing you can do? Hit and run? As he tries to attack Deku one last time, it would be too late as Deku would grab his arms and start restraining him. And before Dabi can try acting his quirk to at least injure Deku even further, Deku would then suddenly just straight up punch him in the face, full force, and knock him out. It got so, and by the way, that punch legit created his face into the ground. Like Deku was tired, all right? All right, this, this was nothing more but a generous amount of stress. So as Deku was trying to calm himself down, to relax, and also to subside the pain even slightly, he would fail to notice that a dark portal had just opened up and that a hand just suddenly shot out of it as it would then casually touch the ground. Now as Deku was trying to relax the pain, he would fail to notice as suddenly a generous amount of force would then blow Deku back as well as shattering the ground beneath him as legit multiple amount of trees as well as a force around them would then begin to be destroyed by this unknown force. Now Deku luckily was able to at least get out of the way from suffering too much damage from it, but still the attack was tremendous as the entire area that Deku was fighting in was destroyed, and the surrounding area had barely any life in them. As Deku would be there, he would then suddenly end up getting up, as he would like look at the person who caused all of this as he finally exited out of the portal. <sighs> Great, it's you, Deku would say as he tries to force a smile, but right now was not the time. 
Walking out of the portal, we will see the arrival of the very man who can cause all this destruction. As we see, Shigaraki has finally arrived at the Force Training Camp. What exactly do you think is going to happen between the battle of Shigaraki and Deku? What exactly is the reason why Deku's eyes are in so much pain? And overall, what do you think these events will end up leading to at the next part of this What If, as this will be the end of part 6 to What If Deku was Shisui's reincarnation? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry guys. Yeah, I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger on this one. So yeah, guys, thank you all so much for your support on this What If. I wish I could continue on any further, but unfortunately your boy's been, like I said, he has school. So he's not going to be able to post at least, like, very long videos. I mean, I guess it was pretty long, but I know I could probably go for like 40 minutes or anything like that. But I can't right now. I really apologize for everything, guys. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this part of this What If. Uh, yeah, guys, the next part would be very interesting. I have an idea about what I want to do. And honestly, yeah, it's gonna be pretty. It's gonna be pretty enjoyable. At least for me, it's gonna be. Hopefully, it's gonna be the same thing for y'all. Uh, but yeah, guys, thank y'all so much for your support. Hopefully, you guys will continue to do so. And also, thank you so much for the people who gave the recommendations for the, you know, for Deku's hero name in this one. Now, instead of Deku being called Shisui the Teleporter, as it would be kind of weird to have his old name, I'm gonna change his name to just the Teleporter. That's it. That's just gonna be his hero name, the Teleporter. And for the people who actually sat there and actually gave me their own hero original recommendation, I want to thank y'all so much for your support. It was amazing. And honestly, I, would, I liked each and every single one of your names, okay? So thank y'all so much, and I really appreciate it. Now, guys, as much as I want to continue on this video, I unfortunately can't. So it's your host, Seiji Samurai, and he's signing off. Peace, and have a lovely day.